Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to have you with us on this Palm Sunday, the start of Holy Week as we head towards Easter. I'm so glad that you're here, whether you are physically here in Southern Saskatchewan, whether you are across the country, if you are joining us in our Zoom room or on Facebook or watching it later on YouTube, however it is that you are joining us for worship, I am so, so glad that you are taking the time Time to do so. I have a lot of announcements this morning, so I'm going to try to keep them quick. The first is thank you so much to everyone who uh, bought and sold Easter lilies for the La Flash fundraiser. We sold 138 lilies, and they, uh, to my knowledge, have all been distributed now. So I hope that you are all enjoying them and that they are bringing a bright spot to your life and beautiful scent to your nose, um, assuming that, of course, you're not allergic to them as I am. A few other announcements, of course, you can find uh, everything you need to know about us on our website at www.lafleshlimerickunited.com. Uh, for today, you'll obviously want the bulletin, uh, but other than that, you can find all sorts of stuff. If you are on the screen with us today, the bulletin will come up for you, um, but if you want to follow along some other time or look back at it, you can find it there. We will be sharing in the Sacrament of Communion today, and so if you don't already have some bread and or something bread-like and some juice or wine or something else to fill your cup, I invite you to take some time, uh, sometime between now and when Communion starts in the service, to go and grab some elements so that you can share in the Sacrament with us together. We were originally scheduled to have it next week on Easter, um, but with the change that we are going to be in person for Easter Sunday service. Uh, we moved it to today so that we could share it together. Which leads me into our next announcement that next week we are returning to the buildings and resuming in-person worship in our buildings at 9.30 at La Flesh and 11.30 at Limerick. Um, that will be for anyone who wants to be, of course, remembering that we do have limited number of seats. Um, so it is a first come first serve, unfortunately. Um, but that does not mean that you have to stop seeing us online. If you are on either the phone or online and want to join in worship, you're still able to do it, but it will move to 930. Uh, La Flesh is the only church that has internet access. And so we will be broadcasting from there at 930 in the morning. So we hope that you'll celebrate with us in one of a myriad of ways on Easter Sunday. Before we get to Easter Sunday, though, we have to go through Holy Week. And, and Holy Week is one of my favorite times of the year. I know a lot of people say, oh, it's such a sad week. Why would you want to, why, why would you want to do that? Why, why is it important to you? And I think it's really important because we can't just go from the joy of Palm Sunday to the joy of Easter without realizing the, the sorrow and the horror of what happens in between. So I invite you and, and very strongly invite you to think about joining us for worship throughout this week. Our Monday Thursday service will be on Thursday at six o'clock, and that will be a very informal service. It's going to be a supper church style. So I invite you to set up your computer or your iPad or your phone or whatever it is that you're watching this on and uh, set it right up on your table and sit down to supper with us. We'll read the story. We'll talk about it a little bit and we'll eat together, break bread together, and it will be great. On Good Friday, we will meet at 10.30, so that is this, this coming Friday, April 2nd. We'll meet at 10.30, both on Zoom and on Facebook Live, and we will journey through the story. We pick it up in the Garden of Gethsemane after Monday Thursday's service, right through until uh, after the crucifixion. We'll meet and journey with Mary, Jesus's mother, and Peter, his disciple, as they remember the, those moments and those days um, when, when they, they lost someone they loved. And we get to hear the story from their perspective. And so I hope that you'll join us for that. And then, of course, join us for the celebration on, Friday, or on Sunday next week. Uh, Easter, oh, I already said that, trivia. Trivia is tomorrow night if you want to join the Westminster United Church in Whitby, Ontario gang. Um, they, their service, not service, 
it's going to be a long day. Their trivia night is at eight o'clock their time, which is six o'clock for us. So again, if you're interested, bring your supper. That's fine. Uh, it will be six o'clock and I will send out the link. If you do not get the link and would like it, please just let me know and I will make sure you have it. It is different than our regular Sunday one. Beth Talon is our wonderful tech person today. This is her first day doing it. As I've said before, I'm so grateful to all of our tech people who have uh, taken that step in faith and, and started to lead us in that. And so we ask for uh, a little bit of grace if there's any challenges, but also all the praise that you can give is always wonderful. So thank you, Beth, for taking this on. I appreciate it. The only other announcement that I have this week is the same one as always. It is our music license number. Our music is reproduced with permission and it is under license A609189 of One License LLC. And Gail Mergen played the majority of our music for us today. I think our offertory was Sherry Sprawl. We've been using it for a few weeks. We begin our worship this morning by acknowledging the territory. This is something that is so important to do. And so I invite you to not only listen and say these words, but to also really take them to heart, but also to recognize the territory on which you are if you're not here in Southern Saskatchewan. These, uh, these are the, the words for here. If you're not here, I invite you to think about where you are. And so we remember today the land on which we worship. It has been the traditional land of the Lakota, Nakota, Dakota, Cree, Soto, and Métis peoples for generations. As people of the United Church, we remember and repent of the harm that has been done to our Indigenous kindred, and we commit to living in a relationship built on love and care for all. Our call to worship this morning was written by Anne Sidal and was posted on the Still Point Spirituality Center website. The story of Palm Sunday tells of how people removed their cloaks and spread them out in front of Jesus as he entered Jerusalem. The cloak we wear every day in, to face the world is both the persona we wish to be present to present and our defense against the elements. As we come to worship, may we lay down our defenses and disguises at the feet of the one who sees us as we really are. And then set free for worship, may we offer our praises with open hearts and lives. And so we light our Christ candle today, remembering that God does see us for who we are, the ones who have God's light in our lives. One of the wonderful things of people of faith is that we know deep in our hearts that even as we approach God, God has already sought and approached us. And so we pray together these words today. I invite you to pray them aloud if you are comfortable doing so and to hear your voice mingling with mine and imagine all of the other voices of those who pray with us. God of all times and all places, we gather as your people, joining with those who have gone before us right back to those who walked with Jesus into Jerusalem. Be with us as we worship today and as we walk the road to the cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
our first hymn this morning. I've been singing all week because it's been stuck in my head. Number 10 in Voices, or in, yeah, Voices United, uh, Prepare the Way of the Lord. Our scripture today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 29 to 44. It is the story of Jesus's entry into Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying, go into the village ahead of you. And as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owner asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus. And after having thrown their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As, as he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in the heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would cry out. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our plants are growing. I, I uh, had to move things around so I could get all the communion elements on the table today and they showed up closer to the camera so you can really see how nicely they are growing. I'm really, really, really hoping that they're going to bloom before next week. <laughs> but whether they do or not, the symbolism is still there. The seeds that we planted at the beginning of Lent as we started our journey towards the cross have taken root and have started to grow. And so the question remains the same as it has throughout all of these weeks. What seeds has God planted in your life in this last week and in these last few weeks during the season of Lent? How are you tending them? How are you watering them and weeding them and tilling the soil and making sure that they grow? How is God doing the same? How are you two together, gardeners, gardening with God? So today, as always, we're going to give them a little bit of water. This water is representative of our baptismal waters. It is representative of the waters of creation that were there at the very beginning of time. And so we water our seeds, gardening with God so that they might grow. Amen. Our next hymn this morning is one of my favorite Palm Sunday hymns, number 124 in Voices United, He Came Riding on a Donkey.
Well, here we are on the last Sunday of Lent, Palm Sunday, as we hear once again the story of Jesus's final trip into Jerusalem. We hear of the donkey and the shouts of the crowds. In our minds, we see the palm branches waving and the cries of Hosanna, save us though neither are actually mentioned in Luke's version of this story. We celebrate with Jesus and the disciples, even though we know that joy will soon turn to sorrow in this story. We celebrate because the season of desert wandering is drawing to a close, but though Lent is ending, our experiences of giving up those things that separate us from God should not end next week. And so today we remember why we have spent this Lenten season giving up the attention uh, and the temptation to chase approval of exhausting ourselves, our favorite sins, and what used to work. We give up to be like Christ. Now, you may be saying, hold up there, <laughs> Janelle, that's, that's blasphemy. Don't go down that road. That's true. We are not God. We are not Christ. But we are Jesus's disciples, people following the way he taught. And Jesus was and is an amazing person to follow. In his humanity, we find someone with whom we can relate. And in his divinity, we see the glory and the love of God. In other words, Jesus the man was humble, but he let the greatness of God's glory shine. And so should we. We often hear about the humility of Jesus. One of the earliest hymns of what would become the Christian church can be found quoted by Paul in the letter to the Philippians. It says this, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. At Christmas, we sing of Jesus, our brother, kind and good, was humbly born in a stable rood. And when we read the, the Palm Sunday text in the Gospel of Matthew, we read that Jesus rode on a donkey, took place to fulfill what has spoken through the prophets, saying the tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. We know that Jesus was humble. But what we don't always catch is that he was also incredibly sure of who he was in God and always ready to let the greatness of God shine through. Jesus knew who he was and what he was doing. The donkey may well have been chosen for its humble status, but it was also a symbol of the Messiah. And when Jesus allowed the people to set him on it, he claimed for himself the titles that others had given to him. When the disciples spread their cloaks on both the donkey and the road, as if before a king, Jesus did not rebuke them and accepted the offering. In doing so, he loudly proclaimed the message that God's story is more powerful than any kingdom. And that got him into trouble. Some folks along the way tried to get him to quiet his disciples because they were drawing attention to themselves with all their shouting. 
But Jesus told them that even if the disciples stopped their great praise, the very stones of the road would cry out in praise instead. All creatures sing out the story of God's love. We can learn a lot from the picture of Jesus for our own lives. Humility is important. We need not always be seeking attention and accolades, but false humility can be just as problematic. What God wants from us is for us to know who we are, a beloved child of God, follower of the way of Jesus, filled with the Spirit's breath. And to use that knowledge to share God's story with the world. And when I say that, I don't mean to go out and share the story of Jesus at the end of a sword with the intention of converting everyone that you meet. I mean, tell the story of how you know God through Jesus, a Jewish rabbi from the backwater town of Galilee and the Messiah who reminds us that God's love, grace, and life are more powerful than death and hatred. Let your story intertwine with the stories of those you meet as they tell you how they know God's work in their life. Let all creation and all God's creatures sing praises to their maker. So today, we give up so that we can be like Christ. We give up the barriers that keep us from shouting out our praise. We give up our cloak of false humility and take on the real clothing of Christ, which reminds us of our place in God's family. We give up our comfort as we walk towards Jerusalem, knowing that it will lead to the cross. We give up that which takes us away from God so that we can be like and stand with Christ in the days to come. Heaven knows that this is not an easy task, but it is holy work in this holy week and always. And we remember that we are not alone as we go. Amen. As people of the United Church, we proclaim our faith in many different ways, one of which is a new creed. I invite you to say the words aloud with me now. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. At this time, I invite you to join with me in the sacrament of communion. Jesus used the everyday items when he gave his disciples this way of remembering him. And so although tradition in the church says that we use bread and juice or, or wine, the fruit of the vine, really use whatever you have at hand. If that is a piece of Easter chocolate that you are saving for next week for the kids, go for it. 
if it happens to be water in your cup or coffee or whatever you have, that's okay too. God does not say, oh, sorry, you didn't do it with the right thing, so that doesn't count as communion. It is the sharing of the story, the sharing of the sacrament, in which we see the, in, the visible sign of the invisible grace of God. And so I invite you to join with me. As we gather for the sacrament, God is with us. And so we lift up our hearts in thanksgiving and praise. Let us pray. Holy One, today we gather to remember the stories of our faith and to give you thanks for your presence with us in the joyful moments of our lives and the ones filled with sorrow. Even before the world was formed, when all there was was deep, deep emptiness, you were there. All creation gives praise to you for it was your creative work that spoke life into being. Through the ages, you have longed for a relationship with us. And so you have reached out through prophets and ordinary people alike. He told Abraham to count the stars and dare to believe that his descendants would one day outnumber them. You were with David as he penned his psalms of praise. You spoke through your prophet Deborah as she delivered her judgments beneath a date palm tree. And you surrounded Esther with your love as she dared to risk the judgment of her king. But we turned away. Ever forgetful, we began to believe that our lives were of our own making. And so you reached out again and took on human flesh, teaching and preaching, healing the sick and calming the storm. You walked among, among humanity to call us again to know your grace and glory, your love and light. And so with all creation, we give you praise, O oh God. We let it rise from our very depths as we proclaim a holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night before he was betrayed, Jesus had one final meal with his disciples. Knowing that he must soon depart from them, he sought to remind them of his everlasting presence and to teach them again of what it means to be a servant. And so as they gathered around the table, Jesus stood and took a basin of water wrapped a towel around himself, and then proceeded to wash the feet of his disciples. An act that was one, at once forgettable for its commonness and utterly unforgettable in its humbleness. When he had returned to his seat, he took the bread from the table. He gave thanks for it and then gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. Whenever you do this, remember me. And after supper was finished, Jesus lifted the cup that he had been drinking and blessed it also, giving thanks for the fruit of the vine. And he's charged his disciples with these words. This is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, remember me. Gracious God, as we gather in this time of worship, we do so connected to all those who receive this bread and cup through in the, throughout the generations. We give thanks for your love made known to us in Jesus of Nazareth, the one we call the Christ. 
through his life, death, and resurrection, we know your presence. And so we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. Send, O oh God, your Holy Spirit upon us and these gifts that we offer before you now. May these symbols of our everyday living draw us closer to you and to one another as we share in this feast which feeds our souls. To you belongs all glory and praise, you who is our creator, redeemer, and sustainer through all eternity. Amen. And now as children of God, let us pray to gather the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, Jesus Christ is the bread of life. Jesus Christ is the true vine. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Come, for all things are now ready. I invite you now to pick up the bread of belonging. May we as a community share in this feast together. And I invite you now to pick up the cup of blessing. May we as a community share in this feast together. Having been fed at the table of our God, both in body and in spirit, we pray together these words. Life-giving God, may this feast that we have shared not end with us. To all who are hungry, may we give the bread of life. To all who are thirsty, a cool, a cool cup of water in your name. May we know our place in your family as we call one another kindred. And may your light fill us all as we go from this time refreshed and renewed for the journey of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, we have been given so much. Sacraments, visible signs of invisible grace. We do not always even know the grace and the love of God, but it is with us every day. And so out of that, out of our great thanksgiving, we share our lives with God, giving our very selves back to God and God's work in this place. 
And so if you are giving an offering of time or talents or treasure, know that what you do is for the glory of God, that God's life might shine in this world. As we think about what it is that we offer, we sing our offertory. of the people was written from on the Christian aid website it is from their monthly prayers section blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord gracious God as we stand at the gates of the city give us grace to recognize the king we proclaim and courage to be part of your kingdom even when it goes against our ways and the ways of the world even when it leads us where we do not want to go. Empower us to free ourselves from the tempting alternatives of power and wealth and status and embolden us to live lives of thanksgiving and praise. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is number 884 in Voices United. Be forewarned, it starts out slow and gets faster as we go along, as we sing out in joy the celebration of Palm Sunday. Jesus has arrived in Jerusalem. And though we know the story will get sad, today, today we rejoice. So let us sing. Friends, may you go out with joy. Go ahead, moving back into your daily lives, walking with Jesus as he enters Jerusalem, knowing that you do not go alone. 
And as you go, may you go with the blessing and the love of God, who is our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer, Jesus, who is our elder brother, and the Holy Spirit of life within you this day and evermore. Amen. <laughs>